MedicalExpress.com, France Germany Joint Nations, tightening controls to halt virus surge. <laughs>
back to school despite recent virus surge. A mother and her three children scanned the school supplies in a pair of supermarket plucking out multicolored fountain pens, crisp notebooks, and plenty of masks despite resurgent coronavirus infections. Similar scenes are unfolding across Europe as a new school year dawns, virus or no virus. European authorities are determined to put children back into classrooms to narrow the learning gaps between haves and have-nots that have deepened during lockdowns and to get their parents back to work. Now, this is where you go, oh, this could be the frightening new normal, right? Because what do they really want you to get back to work so that the economy is healthy? Do we do we really want I mean, you think about this for a second. The people running society, say the Euro European authorities want to make sure that we, we don't uh, have too much of a learning gap between the haves and the have-nots. And for those of you who have been following the lockdown education dynamics, what they're referring to here is that if you're rich, you can have a babysitter, you can have a tutor, you have the best computers, technology, internet service. If you don't, if you're in a single parent household and your parent is struggling to make ends meet and is have to, has to be out of the house and leave you alone, well, now there's a there's an educational divide. But they they're okay with that. They've never fought that before. They, they I mean, really, if you look at the performance of government schools. And you go, no, this is designed to keep people down. This is designed to condition you to be a cog in the machine. And that's what they want people to get back to because they don't want you thinking for yourself if you're being homeschooled. They don't want you to have all that time. I mean, think about what they are robbing from children in terms of time by saying, this is your education. You're going to sit in cemetery row seat and you're going to listen to someone teach you what to think and never how to think. Where that time instead could be spent actually learning things that are useful about the world, like how the whole government run education system is a racket. And they want the parents to get back to work so that they can be exploited. And they want their kids to grow up to be cogs in the machine, too. Remember, that is the point of all of this. But there is a growing resistance in Europe. And as we heard from our friend Ben Swan a couple of weeks ago when this really started heating up, even these numbers are hugely underreported. But now it's not just that we're going to take advantage of you. It's not just that we're going to force you into lockdown, into wearing a diaper on your face, a slave muzzle. This story from Reuters is really quite disturbing. And it does make me appreciate the significance of the First Amendment in the United States, right? Because even though the First Amendment isn't really respected by government, we at least have it as a pretty well enshrined standard of expectations for freedom of speech. And of course, right now, uh, the, the government in the United States is well. So uh, about the, the the protests and the rallies and riots and everything here, it's obviously favoring Trump as the law and order candidate, making the bad, making the left look bad. So the more they can, the more that Trump's campaign and the, the right, the Republicans, they can infiltrate these leftist movements, uh, you know, the leftist, uh, the, the BLM, the, the Antifa, all of that, and make them look really aggressive and dangerous. Well, then the, the more likely Trump is to win. This might be his actual ace in the hole, but it's certainly in his best interest to do this. It also reveals that the coronavirus restrictions don't carry more weight than the entrenchment of the First Amendment in the United States. And that's a good thing. The story from Reuters, though, and this is what people around the world are facing. Oh, no, you don't even get to protest. Berlin bans protests against coronavirus curb. The city of Berlin will put thousands of police on the streets at the weekend to enforce a ban on demonstrations opposing measures imposed to stem the coronavirus pandemic after marchers at a recent rally failed to wear masks or keep their distance. And, and you know what, like Reuters, come on. You're really supposed to be a little more objective than this. I mean, they failed to wear masks or keep their distance. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I failed to obey federal drug laws as a medical cannabis user in the state of Arizona. I didn't fail. I succeeded in defiance. Like, go fuck yourself with this authoritarian bullshit. I mean, this is like, 
this is this is world news on Reuters. Like and and, and like you really don't have like I mean I want to call this out writing by Emma Thomason, editing by Mark Heinrich and Angus McSwan, reporting by Renee Wagner. Our standards, the Thomson Reuters trust principles. Can we trust you to not slander people just for standing up to authority? Andreas Geisel, the Berlin interior senator, said the authorities had decided to ban the protest after weighing the importance of the right to freedom of assembly with the need to protect people against infection. Quote, we are still in the middle of a pandemic with rising infection figures, he said. Yeah, if you believe that, and it, why do we have rising infection figures? And they can do this at any time. This is why they delayed the testing. Now they can put the testing out and say, look, well, we got look, look, we all these more positive tests. They can manipulate these numbers as much as they want. As long as, I mean, the only, the only limit now is uh, the believability. Germany has managed to keep the number of COVID-19 cases and deaths relatively low compared with some other large European countries. But the number of new daily cases has been rising steadily since early July and has accelerated in recent weeks. About 20,000 people, including libertarians, constitutional loyalists, far-right supporters, and anti-vaccination activists marched in Berlin August 1st. Geisel said the organizers of that protest had deliberately broken rules they had previously agreed with police, including wearing masks and maintaining social distancing. Mm -hmm. As he said, quote, such behavior is not acceptable. The state cannot be given the runaround. Well, apparently it, it can. And it will. And it should. A lot more. The uh, Berlin wing of AFD, Alternative for Germany, that is a far-right party, saying the Senate is trampling on fundamental rights. Yeah, but it's nothing new. Geisel said several thousand police will patrol the German capital at the weekend and warned of the potential for violence, saying that he and the police had received threats early in the pandemic. Berlin police detained more than 100 people at an unauthorized demonstration against the lockdown in, Jul in June. Police in the Netherlands detained some 400 people at a protest against social distancing measures. So one of the important takeaways from the story is that in Europe, they are actually just arresting protesters, whereas in the United States, they are fanning the flames of protest for political manipulation. And while we are consumed here in the United States, of course, with our unique challenges under Corona right now, this dark cloud is hanging over the heads of the entire world. And the Adam versus the Man audience is truly international. And I, and I, want, to, I want to take this show's perspective more global if we can. But even short of that, for those of you in the United States, you have to know how this is reflecting the corona racket against the other governments throughout the world. And uh, yeah, it's ugly everywhere.